This is going to be interesting. So I run a project called Girl Skepticism on Wikipedia, and I will be referring to it as the GSOW project. So how many people here march for science? Excellent. I see two hands up by Claire over there. And you probably watched it on TV or on the YouTube or on um, Facebook Live or Twitter or whatever. It was a really exciting time. I'm from California, or America, if you guys can't, haven't already figured that out. And in America, we have this president. <laughs> I apologize. Imagine how we feel. So, the March for Science was started because people were, uh, you know, a little upset, a little concerned about the, what was happening with um, the anti-science rhetoric that was coming out of our government. It was really, really sad. So we put on a March for Science. And this is a photo that I took at uh, Monterey County Skeptics, which is the organization I run locally. It's my local. You're all welcome to come and hang out with us anytime you want. But this is a photo I took at our March for Science, and I absolutely love this. I am a photographer, and I think it sums up the entire March for Science in one photograph. As you can see, this little guy over here with his pink hat and his, his socks that are ones up and ones down, and he's so excited. He's marching for science. It's so cool. And then look at the woodpeckers. Aren't they great? Anybody else dress up as a woodpecker? This poor guy isn't so happy. <laughs> I feel so feel bad for him. I think he wanted to be a um, um, penguin or something. Yeah. So let's get slides next. <laughs> so I am running this organization, and we're trying to improve Wikipedia pages. We're trying to really combat what we find on <coughs> Wikipedia to really make sure that we're putting our best foot forward because we need to absolutely own this. Wikipedia is a skeptic's dream. We're asking for citations, we're asking for evidence, and the evidence, the quality of evidence we're putting up there has to be great evidence. Oops, so these are slides that weren't supposed to be here. So, Let's find out. So, how many people have heard of the Brzezinski Clinic? Awesome. I want Bob Blaskowitz to realize that a lot of people here put up their hand. So, Bob Blaskowitz and David Gorski and other people with science-based medicine, they put out this, um, they've been really trying to attack this clinic in Houston, Texas. It wasn't flooded in the last ring. Um, and if you don't even know much about the Brzezinski Clinic other than knowing that it is a cancer quack clinic. He is uh, trying to treat, he says he's treating um, he's, uh, people's cancer. And, well, you know. So people are going to go to Wikipedia. They're going to Google the Brzezinski Clinic, or they're going to try to find that information whenever they're trying to find out where do they go when the child is desperate and, and uh, you know, they have a dying child, or they're dying in subsequent stage four cancer. And they're going to Google it, and one of the first hits they're going to get is, yeah, Wikipedia. So they went to Wikipedia, and they're going to find this Krasinski Wikipedia page. And it's got all sorts of amazing information on it. You don't have to read it right now. But it has, it explains who he is, it explains how it was founded, it explains his record, it explains um, that there are anti brzezinski sites and so on on the page. Now, the GSOW project did not write this page. We have just kind of maintained that this is something that is, um, uh, was already there. We just kind of helped it out. And I do want to point out that the GSOW editing team is not the only editors on Wikipedia. Wikipedia is run by an amazing group of volunteers all over the world. And if it, they are skeptics even if they don't identify as a skeptic because they require evidence, they require facts, they require great evidence. It can't just be a site like a blog or something. It has to be a, a really good site that they put up. 
If not for the majority of people on Wikipedia, the editors who are there, Wikipedia would turn into the conservopedia within a very short amount of time. So my team is international. I have people all over the world, which is why I'm on tour with Mark Edward and Pontus. And there. We are on tour to try to get editors. So I'm going to recruit you. Just saying. <coughs> because the Brzezinski Clinic recruits people and brings people in from all over the world, we felt that it was very important that we have Wikipedia pages written in languages that the people in other countries who were also desperate from cancer, um, stage four cancer, because cancer doesn't know languages or cultures. We had to write the Wikipedia page in many different languages. And my notes are not here, so this is a Wikipedia page I believe we wrote in Dutch. Thank you very much. So this is a Wikipedia page that's been translated into Dutch. And this is a Wikipedia page that we have translated into Polish. Polish. Oh, this is Polish. What is it? Spanish. Spanish. Oh, thank you, Octavia. I should know that's the only other language I can speak. <laughs> this is an interactive lecture, this way. So we translated it into Spanish, and then we had to translate it into Italian because of this gentleman. How many people know who he is? Pablo. Pablo is a huge supporter of the Brzezinski Clinic. His sister is dying of stage four cancer, and he brought her to the Brzezinski Clinic. She died a few weeks later, not because of um, the clinic, but because she was very, very ill. So Bobby, we didn't know if Bobby was going to go on tour in Italy. We don't know. We just need to be ready so that when he does decide that he's going to speak about Rosinski as a supporter, that he's able to, um, people in Italy will get the information in Italian without having to rely on Google Translate or somebody else explaining it to him. So we also translated it into Italian, there you go, there's the Italian page, thank you. And then we also translated it into, and why do we have to do this in Polish? Because it's Polish. Thank you. So in Poland, apparently, he's kind of a name. The other Wikipedia pages I showed you, okay, the English page receives about 300 page views a day. It receives, you know, maybe hundreds of, 100,000 page views every couple of years. It's easy sees a lot of page views in English because he's living in America. The other pages, since we've created them, they receive maybe four or five thousand page views, six thousand page views. We're ready, waiting for whenever he does, um, uh, his, he speaks out in another language or, or a supporter speaks out. But in Polish, this Wikipedia page, since we created it, is already at 30,000 page views. These are not skeptics reading this page. 30,975 to be exact. I do have some notes because I had to get my numbers right before I came out because the numbers change every day. So this receives normally about 20 page views a day. In two days in October, it received 1,000 page views. I don't know why, but something happened in the media and he was getting attention. So this is one of my favorites. Greek vampire, Tyler Henry. It is not important for you to know who Tyler Henry is. He is just the new flavor of the day. Um, a fuzzy sweater psychics that Mark Edwards is always referring to as the new generation of psychics. We're long gone with the psychics who used to speak like Lillian Brown. I'm sure it's not really big at all. Now we have the buzz, fuzzy sweater psychics. These are the people who, who look like they could bag your groceries. They're the type who look like you could leave your dog with and they could house it. They're the nice people next door, that they're so nice that there's no way they could be lying to you. These are sweet people. So Tyler Henry, as I said, you don't need to know who he is. He's like I say, he's just the new guy on the block. He's 20 years old, 21 now. In 2016, he got a show on a network in, in America called E, which is Entertainment Network. He is brand new to the game. So new that there's no criticism on him. So uh, I was made aware of this man, and I decided I can research and I can write. So I was able to write some articles about Tyler Henry, and I was going through his 
uh, readings and I was able to see what he has written and write critical articles that are not slamming him or anything like that, but they're just talking about what he's saying and, and so on. And I post them up on Skeptical Inquirer magazine. Now, because Skeptical Inquirer magazine is notable, which means it has its own Wikipedia page, then it is available to put on a Wikipedia page. That's how it works, notability works. So Tyler Henry, and here he is with one of my favorite people, and I'm sure yours as well, he got a lot of uh, publicity because nobody had ever heard of him. He just sprang on the scene. He was actually someone they picked up from like a uh, psychic shop in California and put him, put him out there. And he, entered, and he does readings for psych, as, uh, celebrities, celebrities. So he has been supported a lot by Dr. Phil. And he is a Greek vampire. He is the type of doctor who is pointing to him. Also, a Greek vampire, but these are just people who are not the people who have the little shops as a general reading. These are people who are actually planning to speak to dead people. These are the despicable and harmful people we call Greek vampires. Because they're trying to reach onto you and get your, um, and claim to speak to your dead person. So Tyler Henry, here's her, it's fun. I don't even notice for this. This is, these are stats. Now, I need to mention to you that page view stats are only tell us that somebody has accessed the Wikipedia page. It does not tell us if it's a unique viewer, because it could be somebody clicking on the page over and over. It does not tell us if they clicked on and clicked off immediately. It doesn't tell us how long they spent on the Wikipedia page. It only tells us that they access the page. That's all we have to be able to tell how effective it is that what we're doing works. These are Tyler Henry's stats. These are from the time the page was created, and I should mention that my project did not create this page, somebody else did, using some of the articles that I had written and published on Skeptical Inquirer. And this goes from the beginning of uh, the February 2016 all the way to May 2017. You, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but these are the stat page views. And these, look at how these huge numbers are. This is 14,000 page views in one day, and so on. And then a roll of about 1,800, 1,500 page views a day. Another uh, spike, a lull. And then a couple more spikes. Anybody want to take a guess what the spikes are from? Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, yeah, from media coverage. So these are spikes. Now these are huge amounts. Now at the time I wrote this page, I, I mean I made this screenshot, he had 850,000 page views. That's a lot of page views. I'd like to have 800,000 page views, right? But if this man could speak to the dead, think about it. This man did not have 800,000 page views over a year and a half time. He had 800,000 page views a day, maybe every hour. You've got to think about this, people. They, they, they can't speak to the dead. That would be, as Mark says, very dangerous. They'd be the most dangerous person in the world. So I should mention, there is a Susan Herbig Wikipedia page. I receive almost no page views for anything that I do because I'm not in the media, I only speak to skeptics, more or less. So my page views are just kind of like maybe 20 page views a day, no big deal. But as the most prominent critic of Tyler Henry, when I write about Tyler Henry, and on my Facebook page I just put up a new article that just came out about uh, Tyler Henry and how he maybe killed somebody. That, that should make you want to go, right? We'll go after in a minute, go during lunch. So because I have a Wikipedia page, I also am mentioned on Tyler Henry's Wikipedia page. Look at all of this, okay. So you can see, here's the same dates. These are some stats. 
not a low. I mean, a high for, for, a, for a skeptic that has no notability outside of um, this. But there's a lull, there's a spike, there's a lull, and there's some spikes. Now these are in the hundreds, not in the thousands like Tyler. I'm going to put these two together. So you can see what is going on here very clearly is this little dips and everything are exactly matching Tyler and Henry's. That's because people are going to the Tyler and Henry Wikipedia page to find out who the heck this guy is that's on TV. And then they're seeing the chief critic and they're going to that page too. So we know that having criticism on a Wikipedia page is getting access. It's not getting access in the way we would like. I mean, it's going to be, like I said, this is a logarithmic chart. So these are thousands of page, thousands of page views up here in blue, and these are hundreds of page views here in green. So it's not a huge, 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 huge um, difference. But anybody notice anything odd about the Susan Gorman stats? <laughs> anybody else notice anything? <laughs> yeah, there's some holes there. What the heck? Right here, it does not correspond with the title of Henry, and right here, it does not correspond with the title of Henry. Why is that? You were removed from this page. All the criticism was removed, removed from the title of Henry page, exactly. And once it was noticed, it was added back in. Which kind of acts as a control, as we can see that this is happening, and how if there's no criticism on the Wikipedia page, he's not getting any criticism. So, here we go. Let's see what's next. This is a fun thing. So I'm going to mention very quickly that we, we had the Olympics not so long ago. You guys remember the uh, US swim team coming out with their big sucker marks on the kikis all over them? All over their bodies. Well, not only did not only did we all notice that, but guess what? The media noticed it. They're looking for that human interest. As Ron just mentioned, the media is underfunded. They're overworked, and we have to have things ready for them so that they can just kind of run with it. So what happened is the cupping therapy. That's what that those kiki marks were. This is called the lead of a Wikipedia page, and most people only read the lead and then they're off the page and off to a cat video or something else. Like so before the GSOW was was um, before the GSOW realized what was going on, because we're not psychic, we uh, turned on our Facebook feed also, and we said, "Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on here?" Us and the media were going crazy about what is this cupping therapy? I ran over to the Wikipedia page, well, I didn't run, but um, I went to the Wikipedia page for cupping therapy to see what the world was seeing. And you know what they were seeing? If you summed up the article in the, in the lead they were seeing, it said, cupping is old and it works. <laughs> That's what it said. Can you imagine that? So what happened is I and my other Wikipedia editors as well as the, um, the uh, uh, rest of the Wikipedia world ran over like crazy and went and changed the page. So now if you were to sum up the Wikipedia page, it says it's old, it does not work, and it may harm you. So that's what's happened. So this is what happens to the page views because the world is trying to figure out what is this cupping stuff? What the heck is that? And you can see it receives about 1,800 page views a day. Every time a celebrity goes onto Instagram with the little hickey marks on the back, somebody's going, what the heck is that? But look, Cutting Therapy got 106,000 page views in one day. And as we go down here, they still received you know, hundreds of thousands, uh, you know, thousands of page views a day. So this week or so that the Olympics was going on and the U.S. swim team was prancing around with their pseudoscience placebo 
Hickey's, they um, coined that term, somebody, that's good. <laughs> they, they received probably about 500,000 pages. So the Wikipedia page that, at the, that we got in shape pretty darn quick, and it said, this does not work. What was happening, let me see if I can do this quickly, is the media didn't know what to do. So they called in cupping experts. People laying down the, the reporters who got the cupping and stuff. You know, I mean, so we went with notable people we had Wikipedia pages for. We wrote their, we wrote these Wikipedia pages and others, and they're experts in the medical field, and they had written about cupping, so we went and put their, their names on the Wikipedia pages critics so that the media would be able to contact somebody who is sane, who has, you know, uh, credentials, and so on. And these are just some of the people that we mentioned. There's uh, Edward Ernst, Harry Hall, Simon Singh, and Mark Crispin. And I just wanted to point out that for the, for the little, little time that they were mentioned in the league, which wasn't long, they also have a spike. Now, this isn't 106,000 page views. These are hundreds or so. But it still shows that if you can get information on a Wikipedia page, somebody's looking at it, and hopefully it's the media, and they're going to contact our people and say, hey, I see, I see that you have also written about this, you look sane, you're articulate, because we've also made sure that the Wikipedia page shows that they have been writing, um, doing other writings, or have done publications, or uh, TV appearances, and so on. So the media is more likely to contact the people we put on these Wikipedia pages. Well, my slides, these are reversed. I was supposed to start with this person, but that's okay. Anybody know who Stanley Hopkins is? He may have saved the life of somebody in this room. Stanley Hopkins, we just wrote this Wikipedia page in August, and this is how it appears when I made this screenshot a few days ago. problems with this, uh, the world as it is, is that we're too focused on the, peop the wrong people, I think. You know, we know what Kim Kardashian is wearing today. We know what sports heroes are doing. But do we really know who our real heroes are, the people who really are the people we should be represented? I don't think we do. The scientists, the people who save our lives, the people who do the research, the people who speak out, the bloggers who are being killed in countries for speaking out about something that's about a God belief. I don't think we've got their backs. I really don't think we do. Because we don't know these people. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong, because I didn't know this man's name or anything he had done either. But this is just one example of hundreds if not thousands of pages that are waiting to be done. Stanley Plotkin, he's in his late 70s now, he was instrumental on writing and, and, and uh, discovering vaccines for German measles, rubella, for, uh, for a pneumonia vaccine, the MMR. He also was uh, instrumental in uh, rabies. He could have saved lives. He may have saved thousands of lives across the world, yet we do not know who he is. This is the Wikipedia page now, and these are the citations at the bottom. There are 23 citations now for this man. Prepare yourself. This is what the world saw for years. Because he was forgotten. I call this a non-scroller. Because you don't need to scroll to see the entire page. That is it. Five citations to represent this man we should revere as a hero, amongst a lot of other people in this, in this our, our community. And I don't want to end on a negative note. So I'm going to end on a positive note. This is what Wikipedia, this is what our, my project does, the GSOW project. Not only does it try to get information on Wikipedia pages that are suicide, scientific, to make sure that the media has some 
great place to find information to put the best foot forward for our community, our history, our people, our scientists, our activists. But we also want to make sure that these people are not forgotten. We wrote to Stanley Plotkin, and he said, I'm flattered you undertook this, especially as I approached the end of my career and asked myself whether or not I accomplished anything. I get emotional every time I read that. And I, I gave this lecture a few times. Can you imagine that? Let that sink in. He was forgotten and he felt forgotten. And it's our fault. Because nobody owns Wikipedia if we don't have it. And we need to have this.
to our group. I have 95 or 97 or 98 guys. I'm going to keep track because it keeps changing. We've had editors join in the last few days. But I want you to know that as of this morning, we keep track of these numbers of these pages. Only the pages that we have completely rewritten or pages rewritten, not just the normal edits we do. In the last seven days, those 467 pages have had 122,360 page views in a week. In a month, we had, and I like having every single number in here, 695,196 page views. That's a month. And in total, we have had 14,161,317 page views in total. There's nobody in the skeptic community that has an organization that's able to get the fact people outside the choir, not just skeptics like we are. So we'd love to have your support. And the thousands about the editors and the Wikipedia pages out there that are waiting to be improved because we don't want them to be forgotten. And as, and as I have 22 seconds, and as Leo Iwe said, come on now, come on now, come on now. We have got to be able to do this. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Come on! <laughs>